Is Sydney McLaughlin Lavrone going to win the women's 400 meter race at the upcoming World Championships? Can she push towards a new American record or maybe even a world record? These are all great questions which I aim to provide an answer for in this video. So keep watching as we're about to delve right into the action. By now, we've all heard of Sydney McLaughlin Lavrone, the extremely talented runner who has dominated the 400 meter hurdles scene since 2019 breaking the world record four separate times in two years, as well as becoming a double Olympic gold medalist and a three-time world championship gold medalist. There aren't many athletes across the world who have perfected their event to the extent of Sydney McLaughlin Lavrone, so coming into the 2023 track season, there'd be few who would bet against her picking up yet another gold medal in the upcoming world championships, despite the fierce competition from the likes of Femke Bowl and Britton Wilson. As a result, it came as a shock to many when Sydney's coach, Bobby Kersey, announced she would not be taking part in the 400-meter hurdles event in Budapest, rather choosing to focus on the flat 400 meters, where she would broaden her horizon and demonstrate her versatility, challenging herself to claim the world title and possibly break the world record in another event. While many people would consider the flat 400 meters not too dissimilar to the 400 meter hurdles, this change in scenery certainly took a bit of getting used to for Sydney McLaughlin, as she kicked off her outdoor season with a second place finish behind the Olympic silver medalist Marilide Paulino at the Paris Diamond League. In this race, McLaughlin went off like a rocket, catching Paulino within the first 100 meters and passing through the 200 meter mark in 22.66 seconds. Although McLaughlin went through 300 meters with her lead still intact, this wouldn't last for long as Paulino powered past her in the final stretch, leading to a meeting record time of 49.12 seconds for Paulino, whereas McLaughlin finished with a personal best of 49.71 seconds. While this was obviously a very respectable performance from McLaughlin, it definitely showed there was a lot of work for Sydney to do over the following months, if she were to achieve her goals for the season. Sydney McLaughlin Lavrone's next race would come at the New York City Grand Prix, where McLaughlin would line up against the 200 meter specialist Gabby Thomas in what promised to be a captivating battle. Sydney McLaughlin would go on to win this race in a personal best of 49.51 seconds, showing a visible improvement in her 400 meter ability, just two weeks on from her previous race. This race also showed that Sydney had clearly learned a lot from her shortcomings in Paris as she set off much more conservatively, allowing Gabby Thomas to take the lead, before wrestling back first position halfway through the race, destroying the rest of the field, and cruising to victory nearly eight-tenths of a second ahead of Thomas. While it was clear now that McLaughlin was starting to find her rhythm in the 400 meters, her biggest race yet at the USA National Championships would come just weeks after the New York City Grand Prix. While it may seem like a win for McLaughlin was guaranteed in this race from an outsider's perspective given her already proven abilities, this race was pivotal for Sydney McLaughlin Lavrone's season. If she were to have a bad race, this could result in her not making the USA World Championships team for her chosen 400 meters derailing her season. However, this was not to be the case, as McLaughlin progressed through the heats seemingly effortlessly before lining up in the final, most notably alongside the extremely talented Britton Wilson. As the race went off, Sydney McLaughlin got out of the blocks hard, leading from the front and covering her first 200 meters in 23.24 seconds, reminiscent of her 400 meter race at the Paris Diamond League earlier on in the season. However, unlike her performance in Paris, she didn't crumble in the last 200 meters, showing incredible speed and strength to hold off Britton Wilson and power through the finish line in first place, crowning her the American 400-meter champion with a time of 48.74 seconds. While Britton Wilson claimed second place in a fantastic time of 49.79 seconds, McLaughlin's 48.74 second performance represents the second fastest 400 meter time in American history, finishing just 0.04 seconds off Sonia Richards Ross's record set back in 2006. While I'm sure McLaughlin would have liked to claim yet another American record, this time shows a significant improvement over her times set earlier on in the season, while displaying her ability to sustain progress through the heats, a key component for any world championships victory.
as she clocked a 49.79 in the heats, followed by a 49.62 in the semi-final, both of which she then obliterated in the final. This performance also places McLaughlin as the fastest woman over 400 meters in the world this year, and this cements her place as the favorite to take home the gold medal in Budapest, in my opinion. While I think Sydney McLaughlin is currently too far off the 400-meter world record to challenge it in Budapest, I do think that McLaughlin has a great chance of taking down the American record and climbing further up the all-time leaderboard. And with the thrilling battle between Paulino and McLaughlin Lavron set to take place in just a couple of weeks, this is definitely one of my must-watch events for the world championships. But I want to know what you think. Who is going to come away victorious in the women's 400-meter race at the World Championships? Will Sydney McLaughlin Lavrone cruise to victory, or will Paulino go one better than her silver medal last year? Let me know your predictions in the comments down below, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more thrilling athletics content.